Welcome back to another monthly market update. And today we're giving you the Spring Hill, Tennessee market snapshot here in April, 2023. I'm Brandon Johns with the Coleman Johns Group, a real estate agent here in the Nashville area. And we make all these videos to help give you a better idea of what's going on here locally in the middle Tennessee area. So if you like these monthly market updates, make sure you subscribe because we put out these every single month. Now, I'm gonna get right into it. In other videos, I've talked about all the reasons why there's so much demand driving into the middle Tennessee area, and even more specifically, Williamson County, Williamson County Schools, different businesses moving here, et cetera. Those are all in different videos. I'm not gonna go into detail in this video for that. We're simply just gonna jump right into the numbers and see what the market is telling us. Here we are on my computer, and the first metric we're gonna look at is median sales price. Now I do wanna point out that these numbers we're gonna be talking about are specific to Spring Hill on the Williamson County side. Spring Hill does cross into Murray County as well, but these are specifically for Williamson County. So right here, the median sales price is $540,000 here in March, just closed out March, 2023. Right now it's the beginning of April. And as you can see, this is the monthly data, okay? so. Yes, it looks a little choppy, but that's just because we're looking at a monthly chart. And a lot of times the charts that you're gonna look at um, are just gonna be pretty smooth, rounded out because it's either quarterly or yearly. I like to look at it this way because it gives me a better feel of what's going on. Um, and as you can see, you know, towards the peak of last year where we were started to run into even more volatility with rate, the rate environment was changing. So that as you can see these spikes and different things were occurring there. But over the last, February and March, we've had the exact same median sales price. So I'm feeling like we're starting to level out. We're starting to get through all of that volatility into more of a balanced market. And I'll show you on a few other metrics why I think that, but I do want to preface this whole video. I know I, I'm already into the video, but I do want to say this, that we make these monthly market update videos to just give you the data so you can make the decisions that are best for your situation. Everyone has a specific situation, so buying or selling might not be good for you, but it might be good for someone else right now. Um, but if you wanna talk about your specific situation, just reach out to us, we'd be happy to help guide you in whatever your goals are. Now, before we move on to the next metric, I do wanna point out that if we're looking at from exactly March in 2022 to March of 2023, we are technically down almost 2% um, sales price in a year. So that's the, what the data is showing us right now. Um, in January, we would be down quite a bit, um, but 540K is where we're at with March and February. So technically down 2% year over year. Now this steep decrease that we see from December to January is when some of the largest rate increases were happening. So that's when a lot of times buyers are you know, wary, they're taking themselves out of the market, they're losing their buying power. And also if homes aren't priced correctly, but then also buyers are losing buying power, there's this gap and that's why all of a sudden, closed sales, pending sales, they're gonna start going down um, until homes are priced right uh, for buyers to actually step back in the market. So if we look at this and we relay this off of, okay, this decrease, let's look on actual pending sales, so you see this massive decrease. Pending sales go down, closed sales are tanking, and this is because the buyers were losing buying power and the list price was staying the same. But what I wanna focus on is this pending sales. We're starting to see pending sales pick up, and this means that buyers are starting to step back in the market, and they should because the spring season is typically when we see the most traffic, um, buyers come back in, sellers are wanting to sell their home, so it's like the hottest time of the year typically. So we're seeing pending sales tick up, which is also allowing us to show that days on market from 48 in January, homes sitting on the market are now coming down to 17 in March. So days on market are coming down, pending sales are going up, closed sales are going up. And to bring this all together, I wanna show you the percentage of list price. And so this will show you where we kinda of had an issue with the pricing. But we saw that large decrease in sales and activity um, in the December, January area, decrease in sales price, decrease in pending sales. Well, right here we saw 97% of the asking price was actually what it was closed for. So 3% under the list price, you know, 2.2% under list price. And I know it doesn't seem like that much, but it just goes to show that for the whole market, if you're 3% under list price, they were 3% across the board overpriced, right? And as you can see, this is what it was in you know the peak of the of the market when it was such a hot seller's market. Five percent over ask was typical. 
okay? So what we are now seeing in March is 100%. I'm hoping that pending sales are coming up, closed sales are coming up, the list price, to like the actual sales price to list price is 100%. So I'm thinking the pricing has come into check. Um, homes are starting to be priced a little bit better. And also buyers are feeling a little bit more reassured with the Fed that you know rates might not you know decrease as fast as some people are thinking you know waiting on the sidelines but i also don't think they'll increase as much and it's not as scary of a time they feel a little bit more comfortable so that's what i feel like we're starting to see here in the spring season now i don't know for sure the data is going to tell us once april rolls around and which is why we like to look at everything on a monthly basis so we can get make sure we have the best feel about what's going on here in the market so the last metric i want to talk about is the supply here's month supply and as you can see we're looking at 2.7 months supply it started to climb a little bit going into the end of the year obviously it's inverse like the month supply goes up when homes aren't being sold and off the market so as more homes come online there's more supply and that's what you're seeing this increase here but now we're starting to see a dip now i do want to point out i've talked about it before in other monthly market updates um, anything over a six month supply is a buyer's market anything under six month supply is a seller's market so we are still under three right now um, so under three months supply, it's still a very you know, strong seller's market. So that's just something to know, but this just goes back to the major issue in the United States for housing, but also specifically middle Tennessee. Over the last few years, there's been such a supply issue, which has caused prices to increase so dramatically with all the demand that's pushing to the area. And then to add on top of that, this major push over the last couple of years with people buying new homes and getting you know, new mortgages at 3% rates. It's a spring season and typically maybe some of these people over the last couple of years would, you know, sell their home with so much appreciation, but now they're noticing, okay, if I go get a new mortgage, it might be a 7% rate. And why would I do that if I can just rent out this home at a 3% rate and just stay with this mortgage because it's 30 years over 3%, like the appreciation, it cash flows, it makes so much sense, sense as an investment. like. Now these people that would typically not be landlords are becoming landlords. So that also weighs on supply now. So there's more buyer demand because now, well, we bought the houses we typically would have just sold and that would help supply, but now we're gonna hold that and also buy again. So it's even more of a weight on supply. So what the data is showing us right now, you shouldn't see some major crash, uh, but only the time will tell and the data will show us we're going into the spring market. Open houses are very active lately, so we'll see how it plays out and we'll continue to update you on these monthly market reports. Now we also send out PDF market reports on Spring Hill, but also surrounding areas like Franklin, Brentwood, Nashville. So if you're interested in any PDF reports sent to your email, just reach out to us. We'll be happy to send that your way. We also have specific neighborhood market reports that we send out as well. So just reach out to us, we'll be happy to send them to you. So I hope this video was helpful, giving you a snapshot of what's going on here in the Spring Hill real estate market in April, 2023. Once again, I'm Brandon Johns with the Coleman Johns Group, a real estate agent here in the Middle Tennessee area. If you enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe and also reach out to us. We would love to be your real estate resource here in the Middle Tennessee area, whether you're buying, selling, or looking for an investment property, we would love to help you in the process. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.